Okay, so the next panel is about education. It is led by uh, David Quartieres, who is the co-founder of Arduino. And um, do you want to come to the stage? And he will introduce the panel. We are having this competition on who has the longest beard, but uh, David is clearly winning. I always win. You always win. Okay, so you don't need that much introduction. Yeah, it's so good. I will good. leave you the stage. Thanks. So we're running a bit ahead of schedule. So I, I wonder, I see that we have our uh, remote guest connected, which is always a challenge. And I have to say yes to crack a joke. That's uh, surprising to be in Italy ahead of schedule. That's not very normal. Uh, sorry. Uh, OK, uh, so I will start introducing the, the remote uh, participants. Today, for, for this education panel, we have uh, Four participants. First is uh, uh, Mimo Aprile, Domenico. Hello. If you can connect, I don't know if you can give me video to Domenico. Just a few minutes. Yeah. Hello. Can, can you, you hear me? Yeah. Now I hear you. I mean, I think okay, I'll hear so this. Okay. So now I switch uh, the audio out. So here you see Domenico. Hello, or Mimo. Hey, that connects from the south of Italy. I understand. And um, Stefania. Hey, Stefania. <laughs> Hello. Uh, hello. Hello. I, I will make a brief introduction of you guys later on. I just uh, wanted to, to uh, see if you were connected. And uh, here live we have uh, Julio. Where is Julio? Uh, Julio, please uh, go away, come on stage. And uh, Alessandro, please. Uh, so I want to make a quick introduction of all of the participants in this panel. And I need to make sure internet works for me. Of course, works since Vodafone is uh, supporting us with this. <clears throat> Please take a seat. Uh, so it's really great to have all of you here today. I, ha I was saying earlier, Stefania, you couldn't hear this because you were not connected yet, that I was really excited to, to have you around today. Um, I mean, I'm really excited to have everybody around today, but I mean, uh, uh, I, I guess that when working in my, in my field, <laughs> having uh, people from all the different levels connected is very important. Uh, but having someone with uh, your CV, I'm going to start presenting you, is, is very interesting. So Stefania is the founder of a lot of different initiatives, uh, Haki Media, Afri Makers, Maker Camp. Um, she says she's very passionate about creating and testing new learning models. So I guess it's what you're doing right now, if I could say this. You're sitting at MIT, right? Yes, yes. Uh, Hi, nice, to, jo nice to, to join you today. I'm very happy to, to be able to connect, even if it's online. Well, uh, I think you will make a great job. Uh, sound comes fantastically well. And uh, just to say one sentence from uh, Stefania's, uh, one of the multiple biographies I, I checked uh, to prepare myself for this uh, panel, you said that exploring how children, as they play with these new de devices, develop new ways of thinking about intelligence, emotion, and social interaction. So that's your, your mission. Yes. That's also a uh, part of my research right now and what I'm working on here at uh, MIT Media Lab. So uh, I, can, I can tell you a bit more later after we finish introducing all the panel. Yeah, of course. Uh, there, there will be questions <laughs> around this for sure. Uh, I, I would say, like, for those of you that are interested, you should check out uh, Stephanie's website. Uh, she has posted a, a blog post, I think, two days ago or yesterday, even. It's about yesterday, working with yeah. yeah, working with smart toys and introduction in the home. Uh, so building a link between education tools, parents, and children. So I think it's very interesting. I think we will talk more about that. Uh, on that regard, um, talking about linking. <laughs> schools and children we have somebody coming from a school so julio here from spain uh, so julio is a technology teacher and uh, the headmaster of a uh, upper secondary school yeah um, so as an electronic engineer we've been teaching for i would not say the amount of years because we will unveil how old you are uh, but you're very young in spirit and um, so one of your interests, as you say, is that you have a big interest in introducing technology for students, especially they make sure they learn about programming, regardless of whatever they're going to study afterwards. Yes. 
uh, and you're officially the first CTC teacher of the Arduino program. Yeah, uh, when we start, when we started, uh, I don't remember exactly the the, the year, 2012, 2013. Mm -hmm. I we started with a group of teachers in Castilla-La Mancha, is the name of my region in in Spain. Uh, we started with David Cuartillas a uh, really interesting project, a CTC project that uh, uh, after that uh, after that is uh, growing around the world. Um, I think uh, it's, it's important for, for our student because uh, in our re region the, um, the the project is uh, keep on keep on developing mm -hmm. uh, for the, the last uh, five or six years. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. we, we have a chance to talk more about this during the questions. Mm -hmm. uh, I will just make a quick introduction of uh, Mimo. So Mimo, can you say if you can speak now? Because you, when you tried to speak earlier, we couldn't hear you. Okay, did you hear me? Yeah, perfect. Did you hear me? Yeah, perfect. perfect. So, so uh, Mimo has a really long CV, so I will try to just uh, <laughs> keep it short. <laughs> yeah, so it's like a couple of master degrees, a PhD in yeah. engineering, um, being a consultant, but I think the reason why you're here is because you, you mentioned that you love robotics and introduce it uh, as part of like uh, didactics through the use of open source tools. And uh, when I was researching about you, I, I found that you mentioned somewhere that you are involved in doing civic hacking. So what I read well, from a perspective something of... Something like that. Yeah, I, I read from the perspective of citizen science, so nobody should get scared. Your mobile phones will not be stolen during this uh, panel. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, and I, I, I don't know, I got told, maybe I'm wrong, I have to ask you before we start, that you might be showing something. You, were, you had a demo or was that a rumor? No, 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 it's okay. But uh, uh, I, I just want to say if you hear me clearly. Sorry, I couldn't understand. Uh, do you hear me clearly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect, yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. No, just I want to say I'm just a teacher. I'm, uh, I just try to teach computer science in uh, upper, uh, upper school uh, and uh, try to introduce robotics and uh, making uh, and IoT with uh, the use of Arduino since about five years. So this is just my, uh, my, my job, my stuff, my job now and uh, what I formerly have uh, I've done in the past is uh, something I try to uh, to take into my into my didactic. Thank you very much. Sounds really good. I think I, I see already some connections between your work and Julio's work. Uh, and then finally, uh, just to cover up almost like the last step, because uh, I would say Stefania's work, without being very constrained, by looking more at younger audiences. Then we have uh, Mimo and Julio that are working at a bit more like middle age, you know, upper secondary, and so on. We have Alessandro that comes from MathWorks. And Hello. As you know, I'm actually really excited today. I don't know if you've seen my tweets uh, because we're launching today this kit, the engineering kit that's after two years working with MathWorks. Uh, not that we are lazy, it's, it takes a long time to make good, good things. Um, we're finally releasing, but Alessandro has to give uh, some, experience, some background about him. Has experience in firmware, who was a consultant for aerospace and defense, and at some point became interested in uh, software systems for crunching numbers, modeling, and simulation. And there is where he ended up being uh, at the head of business and marketing development for MathWorks. Uh, so guys, as I said, uh, you all represent different sectors of education. And uh, to me, it's extremely relevant that we are all here. Uh, and I have a couple of more focused questions for everybody that I will ask towards the end. I will first uh, like to open the debate and uh, set up the ground for what is education, what is digital education, and so on. So uh, uh, I will take just random people. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure I will ask the same question to everybody, because I will, otherwise the, 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 the panel will last forever, and we only have 20 more minutes. So the question is digital education. So it is a, an opportunity to understand the world, or is it just a trend? So is digital so important that we all should be concerned about it, or it's just like a, you know, something that's in fashion right now, and people are spending money on it. So I would like to start with uh, maybe Stefania. 
Yeah, so um, I don't know if I understood correctly the, the question is uh, if computer science education is in fashion or if it's actually a thing? Well, uh, it's, it's, it's more... <laughs> okay, that's that's another take. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so it's, it's more from almost like a societal perspective. Like, is it really... Mm. Yeah, There's more this conflict about, you know, people that have big tech companies bring their kids to Waldorf schools. And we that bring our kids to normal schools want them to learn about computers. So, yes. so is it a trend? Shall we focus on this or where shall we go with this? Yeah, so, you know, David, since I last saw you in the past two months, I've been going to schools every single day as part of my research and all sorts of schools, like public schools, private schools, after schools, uh, public libraries, museums, and I can really compare because the idea for, for my research project and for Cognimates, which is this new platform for AI education that I launched, um, is to start with kids that even if they never programmed before or they don't like programming or to see what they would like to do with technology and um, what they're passionate about. And it's been very interesting because I've been working with kids that you know, have a hard time to read and write in English. Um, and English is not their first mother tongue. Um, and it's been so inspiring to see how they interact when you have physical hardware. Because like there, we speak with our hands, right? So they can prototype and they can do things. And, and uh, it's been really, really exciting to see how they shine because all of a sudden they feel like, okay, I'm good at something, I can do something. So that's one part that I'm seeing as a transformation on a daily basis. Um, uh, taking a step backward, I do think um, there is some sort of elitism that comes with pushing, you know, teach to code or pushing STEM or STEAM or whatever we want to call it. STEM stands for science, technology, education, uh, uh, engineering and math education, and they added STEAM like for arts and design. However, I feel like a lot of times uh, in funding structures and also in the programs are being implemented, the arts and design and humanities are being left behind. And that's really a shame because we see these days, like with the challenges of uh, social media, with the challenges of kids being able to get on the web via voice at four year old, um, that is more important than ever to have like hard conversations about role of technology, how, what, what are meaningful uses of this technology, involving parents, grandparents, people of different generations. So if we take humanities out, if we take the creativity out, and we just have like a job-centric approach in how we implement this tech, you know, education programs, I don't really think that will have good results long term. Okay, uh, I think this opens up, so I will not bring this question. I think you made a great explanation of this matter, so I will not continue with this question unless anybody has something to say. But because I, I think it links really well to this idea of education beyond the school, and especially expectations about what education and digital education should be. And since we have two teachers here, or a teacher and a school director, former teacher, uh, I think it's really meaningful to ask, what do you think parents understand or of this idea of digital education. Do they understand it's important? Do parents like get tools for the students to learn or they expect the school to provide everything and so on? Uh, well, uh, I think uh, all technology is developing uh, nowadays uh, using digital tools. Then it's uh, for, for uh, students uh, in a secondary school is uh, really important for them to understand it. And I think it's um, essential for them. Okay. And uh, Mimo, do you have a? Can you add anything to this? Uh, I think we have. Uh, we need a new uh, digital humanity. We need to understand that uh, technologies are not something uh, um, uh, outside from uh, from ourselves. It's something that we we can use to. Um, to to be to to make better uh, our life. So we need to understand that uh, we have to um, understand and learn how technology uh, how technology works, and then uh, we have to use it to uh, to be better uh, in uh, everything in our life. Okay, so basically you are supporting the idea that this should be made understood to families as well? 
Uh, the question is yeah, on, yeah. yeah absolutely because uh, otherwise if if we just uh, if we think that technology is not uh, something for uh, all the the actors of society so parents uh, so uh, childs and so on we just have a lack of comprehension between uh, uh, people so uh, we we can't uh, we can't do this we have to uh, approach it in a different way uh, from a humanity point of view, the technology. Thank you. Okay, so then I think the next question that I had in the list links really well, and I, I'm going to direct it towards uh, Alessandro, since you are coming from a tools company, so to say. I mean, it's a software tool, MATLAB, Simulink, and so on, but it's still a tool. Um, so the question is because all of you are, there is teachers here, and there is the two other, all of you, your meet teachers. And uh, so are tools, I mean, are tools the way to teach technology? So do people really need to, uh, need to use tools to learn concepts? Or can we detach the concepts from the tools? That's one question. And the other one is, do we as teachers have enough background to do this? You know, it's like, the techno are the technology teachers ready to teach about image processing, for example, so they can then use something that is not Photoshop to teach the class. So, Alessandro, since you guys develop tools, uh, yes. what's your experience? So, actually, some of our industrial customers uh, used to call companies like Matworks the, the toolists, as people making buildings, but at times not really understanding what the tools should have been used for. And uh, luckily, the, the situation has changed uh, in long years. Uh, so tools is a very broad term, right? So uh, a word processor is a tool, and uh, I don't know exactly how much a word processor contributes to education and education engineering in particular. Is a tool is part of an environment that is facilitating the teaching and learning experience, uh, so it's probably something that's needed. Uh, if we uh, shift focus to specific engineering tools like uh, MATLAB Simulink, but also CAD tools, uh, finite element method tools, uh, uh, I believe uh, they might be very important because they help uh, higher education or education in general to address uh, a couple of the important issues that education has uh, in, in these times. Uh, they help to attract students to uh, engineering and to scientific studies. They help universities to keep them, to keep them interested and engaged in what they do so that they don't live in frustration. And they help to make uh, uh, students uh, more uh, employable. So if the tools used by uh, academia and, and education are the same tools that are used in the industry, they become the prelude to something that uh, students will find when they finally will try to apply for jobs. So yes, I believe they are, they are important. Uh, it's also important that together with the tools, tools uh, uh, developer provide, uh, well, instruments for the teachers to make the most effective possible use of the tools in front of the classes. Okay. I believe we, we have done a lot in shifting uh, attention from the teachers to the learners, mm -hmm. it might be now time to go back to the teachers because we are asking the teachers a lot of things that they have not been trained to do. Okay, it's a really good uh, thing that we can then link to, to two teachers. <laughs> so you guys, uh, I, will, I will ask Mimo now because we had Julio just before. Uh, what do, yeah, what, what do you think about this idea that the students have been the focus for, let's say, tool, tool makers for a long time. Like, I don't know, Scratch is meant, for example, I mean, you have Stephanie here that's been collaborating at some point with Lifelong Kindergarten that makes Scratch, right? Scratch is really aimed at students to somehow be independent and learn how to program with little assistance, right? Uh, but do you feel, as a teacher, that, that um, uh, you need more help. I mean, probably you are the wrong person to ask this, but <laughs> yeah. But I mean, yeah, because you, you pre seem to be pretty self-sufficient when it comes to create content. But the question is, when you look around at other teachers, you think mm -hmm. that 
people that create tools and content for education should have a bigger focus on the needs for teachers in order to be able to approach students? Uh, so, uh, I think uh, we have um, a big problem with education in Italy. So, we have to change our, our approach as a teacher. Uh, I, I have to change my approach as a teacher because I have to uh, maybe I don't need uh, so so many tools, but I have to or to understand how or to learn uh, so many tools. I need to, uh, as a teacher, I need to understand how I can um, involve my students into uh, my didactic and uh, to to be to be able to, to be uh, to make them able to. Uh, conceive, create something useful for uh, their uh, their growth as a as a person, as a, uh, as a, as a, as a, not a, not just as a student. So uh, I just, just let me let me speak about a project I I call it's co making lab. It is co making coding and making laboratory. And uh, this project has been uh, has already been active since four years in my school, and it aims at realizing a knowledge app, developing uh, digital skills for students, just creating prototypes, but also um, increasing uh, increasingly required by the labor market, uh, some developing skills increasingly required by labor markets like uh, uh, such as soft skills. Uh, uh, cooperation, team building, problem solving. So, uh, the problem is to shift the focus uh, for a teacher from what I learn and uh, what uh, I'm developing uh, with my students. That is quite different. Okay. Can I jump in on that as well? Um, yeah. uh, I, I just wanted to say so, um, because it's very interesting to, for me to hear what the you know, perspective of a teacher in Italy is like I'm um, originally from Romania and my mom is a teacher also. And um, it's been very interesting because I went home for Christmas and I showed her the platform I'm working on. So David mentioned image processing earlier or, you know, more complicated concepts. So basically what we've been doing is creating simple blocks. So very similar to Scratch, but like extensions and making it very accessible for teachers and students and parents um, not to have to understand or like learn how to code in JavaScript or Python or complicated languages, but actually just use blocks and operate at a conceptual level. Um, so be able to, for example, train your webcam to recognize cats from dogs or make music with balloons of different colors. And if you don't want to use a computer, maybe you could use an Arduino robot or things like that. And I was showing it to my mom and the blocks, you know, you, it's just language like the way we talk. It's like, what do you see in the picture? Can you see a cat? If you see a cat, then do this song. Um, my mom loved it, uh, but her approach was, I need to learn this very well. And then I'm going to go and show it to my students. And my, my reaction was, no, mom, you don't need to learn it very well. You just need to play with them or let them play. And you just, you will learn together. And I think it's also, you know, whenever we get a new technology like artificial intelligence and um, there is a lot of fear, especially for adults, there's a lot of fear and it's the unknown, but I think these technologies are not going away. And in many ways, the young generation and the children can really help us kind of bridge that fear and be more open-minded and explore and play with these things. I have to thank you guys because you're making my job so much easier in this panel, because you're basically giving me like the step to the next question, like in a very natural way. So you're just talking about what I, what I call progression, right? Like you come to a new place, you come with a new pedagogical model, like we did, for example, with CTC. We invented this new way of like tra helping a school trans transform into a into a PBL using PBL, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I always I always imagine this picture when I was brainstorming this concept here with Julio many years ago and, and his colleagues, like because uh, we did a co-design process uh, to create CTC as it is nowadays, and. Um, and uh, I imagine entering Julio entering in a class and saying, 
okay, guys, we're going to make a project-based learning so you can do whatever you want to. And I imagine this kind of anarchic image of like the students making like airplanes and throwing them to the teacher and, you know, putting the paper basket on fire. And so, so what, okay, letting jokes aside. So this is, there is a progression in my opinion and uh, correct me or feel free to air your own opinion as well where we need to help us as technology developers and tool developers, and this is Arduino's role or MathWorks work role as well, uh, and help people with content that is created in a certain way so that they can uh, fearlessly enter a classroom without knowing 100% of the things and figuring out ways on how this thing could evolve, right? So, and in that way, I wanted to ask Julio and then the others please feel free to contribute to this question. So. Um, uh, how, how was your experience when, when we build this project-based learning program, CTC? Like, uh, what was your initial thoughts? What were your initial thoughts? Like, okay, these guys are, I don't know if you thought these guys are coming from the moon and, and suggesting something that's completely insane. And uh, afterwards, what happened? So what happened at the end of that and what happens today? I think uh, that um, the city, when we started a CTC project in, in our region with uh, 25 schools, um, was uh, so difficult at, at, uh, at, the, at the beginning uh, because uh, um, a lot of teachers don't, don't have the, the, this experience. But uh, five years uh, after, uh, right now, uh, Around, I think, uh, 100 uh, schools in, in Castilla-La Mancha uh, is developing this kind of, of methodology, BPL, or CTC, or CTC project. Uh, we have an important goal uh, because for, for, for teachers, I think the most important thing we can teach to our students is how can learn themselves. Because in, in secondary school, uh, some teachers, uh, a lot of teachers, most of teachers, um, evaluate uh, how many concepts students can memorize. By the, right now in the internet era, here no, is, is not useful, this, uh, this kind of methodology, because the, the things are changing uh, quickly. For, for uh, uh, therefore, uh, I think uh, we can uh, teach to our student work in a team, uh, analyze the results and data. How how can find the solution uh, depends on the data, depends on the results. Uh, students often. Okay, then I will translate. I wish to send this question to Mimo as well. Uh, because, okay, you, you said that you, you're just a teacher, but actually you're not just a teacher. You come with a pretty heavy background to teach technology at a school, right? Uh, but I, I, will foc I will bring this question, since you are focused on citizen science a little bit, uh, I will focus on the idea of transversality. This is a question that I also posted to all of the members in the panel. So it's like, uh, so, okay, you are the guy that knows the technology, right? <laughs> and you're at the school, and uh, how do you collaborate with other teachers? Do you, find, do you find projects that you can do together? Do you suggest these kind of things to other teachers? Or they think you are the crazy guy in the, in the school that sends balloons to take pictures of the sky and things like this? Uh, maybe, maybe they look at me as, a, as an ideal, I don't know. Uh, because um, the, the, dif the difficulty is uh, really to find some, uh, some points that um, over, over um, uh, some uh, point of uh, contact and uh, but anyway um, it's not so easy but uh, it is not impossible to do it so for example in a first class so students uh, around uh, are around 14 years old we are developing we scratch a project uh, on uh, based on uh, uh, Piccolo Principe, that is uh, <laughs> a tale, uh, um, but uh, it is possible also to develop something with uh, physics, of course, uh, and uh, other kind of uh, 
of uh, of uh, of disciplines. But uh, the, the problem is that you have we have to uh, understand that, uh, as Julio said, uh, the horizontality is important is more important than verticality. So we need uh, to, uh, mm, to to make able our students to cooperate because the students are enthusiastic about these activities because they can uh, uh, create something that uh, uh, that work and so they are able to um, they, they are naturally uh, able to collaborate uh, between uh, between them so uh, is is everything is easier so the very the very pro the, the big problem is to understand that we need to as uh, as teachers we need to to work as a team and not as a single uh, teacher of, uh, a, of computer science, of uh, literature, of physics. We have to find points of contact between our um, contents because otherwise we have uh, we, we we can't uh, uh, we can't win the, the challenge of the the, fair, uh, the of this area. No microphone. Okay, now I have microphone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Stefania, I I wanted to actually bring you in here because I'm, you are a researcher in this field, and I guess you are doing two things. I'm assuming, so please correct me if I'm wrong. The one is you are going out to places and making studies on what people are doing right now, and then you design experiences and you plant this seed and then you test it with people. Uh, so so I I guess you have a double-folded vision on this. One is, what, what, is have you see, what you've seen in the, in the idea of transversality when it comes to technology specifically, right? So it's like, do you see that teachers have challenges to collaborate when they have to introduce technology in a class? They say, what should I use, for example, an Arduino board to measure temperature? I already have a thermometer, right? Mm -hmm. that's, like a, that's like a one example. And uh, the other, the other hand, the other question is like, okay, you make these experiences. So when you make these experiences, do you Either, think it's right. easy to challenge like that understanding people have and get them to think differently? Yeah. So I think you summarize very well what we do. So with Cognimates, which is this new platform we launch for AI education, which has an entire series of AI extensions uh, for Scratch 3.0. So it works on a phone, tablet, mobile. We've been developing them in, you know, fast iteration cycles and collaboration with kids, teachers, parents. Um, and we learned a lot because m many things that we thought would work didn't. And the other way around, many things that we thought were too complicated actually worked very well. Um, I think in, in terms of this participatory design and kind of involving the teachers, involving the parents, and especially the kids, in the design process for me and my team has been instrumental and crucial. And in terms of transversality, like I definitely think in the back of my mind every time we implement something is like, do I make it accessible? Because we have extensions for Jibo Robot and Cosmo Robot and Arduino and so on, but many you know schools maybe don't have access to these technologies. So we also have extensions that just work on a phone or in a tablet or on a computer um, and are also very powerful. You could use, you could train a model to play rock, paper, scissors with you. Um, so I think I'm always thinking when I'm designing something and building this platform to um, enable access and um, not make it restrictive in that way. Uh, in terms of collaboration between teachers, I was just um, doing a workshop with teachers and museum curators at the STEAM conference in Barcelona two weeks ago. And, you know, it, it was very inspiring, like, to see all the teachers in the room. We give them all the different tools and boards and robots and, you know, activities. And they start playing and they did exactly what the kids would do. And they loved it. And some things were broken because we're still developing them and some things worked. And they understood that that's part of the process. Um, but I think it mattered a lot that we were in a different context, that we were at this conference. There was a lot of energy. Everyone was there to learn and play. 
So a big question I have is like, how do we bring that in the school and how do we bring that in the classroom? Uh, in my experience, it's been easier to do it in the after school program just because you are not as constrained by, you know, the curriculum and the schedule. So you do something and then like after an hour you need to stop. Um, so it's been easier for us to start collaborating with after school programs to get into schools, make teachers feel comfortable and just kind of aware of what we're doing, get their hands on, suggest ideas and showing them that their ideas matter, that we're implementing them. Um, and then kind of working with them to see how they could bring this into the classroom. Uh, and that's where we are now. Um, we put learning guides and all the projects that were developed and all the content online on Cognimates.me with the idea that educators can download it, use it, try it, give us feedback, help create more of that. Um, I think there, there's a big lack of more good curriculum and educational content. Um, definitely more curriculum and educational content in different languages, not only in English, um, Spanish, Italian, you know, Romanian. Um, even if people speak English, I think it makes a huge difference to, to allow um, kids and teachers to, to create content in their own language. Um, so I'm not sure if I completely answered your, your question. Um, access to technology in schools is hard. I see it all the time where schools buy hardware and it gets locked somewhere and it's not being used just because it's not easy to use it. So the question is, like, how do we make things that are easier to port, easier to collaborate with, more accessible, both in terms of price, but also in terms of how do you connect to it? How, how fast can you connect to it, right? What's the time to blink um, for, for anything that you're using? So that's, that's kind of like what I've seen so far. Um, I mean, you answered the question and you went far and beyond, so thank you very much. <laughs> You trash, trash a couple of my questions, which is good. Um, so, so then I, I want to bring Alessandro to this point of the conversation again, because right now we've been for a while talking about uh, younger audiences, but I see some of the problems are the same. Like, because uh, you were mentioning in a conversation we had before, like you want people not just to buy MATLAB, you want people to use MATLAB, you know? So, so uh, now we heard how Stefania was talking about the way they're engaging teachers in, in schools, how they create content, how they make it publicly available for them because they you know cost might be an issue, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but the question for you is like, okay, how do you guys engage university teachers to use MATLAB? Mm. That, 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 that's a difficult question and uh, I believe the, the, the challenge well, it's not only about MATLAB and Simulink, right? It's really the challenge of, uh, well, making, having, making Arduino used, not, not only uh, distributed. Uh, so, uh, there are several ways. First of all, I would say that uh, it does not only take collaboration between teachers. It takes actually very strong alignment between teachers and students and families. I would extend it to uh, regulations and societies in general. So if we want to be able to advance education, we need to do it in a framework that be very coherent and very consistent. So we must agree about where we want to go and we must agree about what's the best way to go there and then start pedaling and, and walking and running all together uh, in the same direction because it's, it's difficult and, and challenging. So you're basically are talking about the idea of transformation, where we want to go. So you're, tell, you're kind, of, kind of telling me like, even though you're a company or Arduino is a company right now, we do need to have an educational mission that transcends we are as a company because we try to make society better, right? That's kind of the idea. Uh, I believe, and you know that all, uh, almost all companies have uh, very clear mission statements uh, and at times they diverge from these mission statements. The missions stay on the website and they do different things. So uh, it's, it's again a matter of staying consistent and staying faithful to the mission you have. As far as Matworks is concerned, this is about accelerating the pace of engineering and science and learning and help 
to education is one of the way that we have chosen to do that. Now, I believe in a way you, Arduino, uh, have gone through the same path as MathWorks. So we started in education, then we became adopted by a, a different set of people, the industry, the makers in the case of Arduino. And now we are back to education because we believe it's better to train engineers using tools like MATLAB and uh, application hardware like Arduino because we will make them uh, better students and better uh, citizens of the world at the end. How we can do that? We, we, uh, we must open access to uh, the tools. Uh, I don't like to call Arduino low-cost hardware, I like to call it uh, experimental or accessible hardware instead because it gives me a better idea about what I believe it can really make for, for education. So we, we must open access, we must, we must provide uh, tools that are usable by teachers, we must allow them to find places where they can discuss, share and, and, and collaborate. Um, uh, for instance, one, one way of doing that is through, uh, you know about student contests and student competitions, there are a lot of competitions uh, happening around the world. Uh, we try to favor those that have a collaboration component, so that are not about winning a contest, but are about collaborating among teams to come out with uh, a, a better solution. And so these are, I mean, I don't think there is this one single thing that will solve the problem, but there is probably a variety of multiple things that we can do in order to uh, enable uh, teachers that are, uh, are willing to be part of this project uh, to, to really succeed. Uh, I have to thank you for this last thing you said. It's really good. I mean, uh, I have to say, I mean, not that I'm trying to make marketing, but uh, one thing that happened when we ran the CTC project uh, is that we suggested this kind of like a, a way to collect points where everybody could vote for all the projects from everybody else. And the suggestion that came from the schools is like, we love this idea of seeing who likes people's projects, but we don't like the competition aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that to see that it's, it, it's also at the other side, like, like schools are not necessarily willing to compete. So probably we are trying to sometimes put the wrong carrot in front of them for them to go into, into projects. Um, what actually brings me to ask both, again, Mimo and uh, Julio about this. So what do you guys feel uh, as educators, now it's a, as a question more as educators, and since you mentioned the idea of price, so, so beyond the idea of price, let's say, let's put that aside, you know, uh, what makes, and this is like the Arduino question of the, of the panel, what makes Arduino exciting for you uh, at school? And when talking about Arduino, I'm talking about Arduino and Arduino compatible boards and, you know, what makes it better than other things, and at the same time, what can we improve? So this is always the question. So we start with Mimo, since we have you there, ha haven't been talking for a while. Um, I, I think uh, um, Arduino is uh, um, the, the best, uh, I, I think is the best way to introduce uh, uh, making uh, into a classroom. Uh, because it's uh, it's easy and it stimulates the the creativity of students. So um, I have uh, just uh, I, I just uh, introduced the Arduino so like like, like this uh, on the desk, and so guys, this is Arduino. This is a shield. We can construct something about. Uh, uh, the, 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 that can uh, uh, communicate with uh, with, the, with, the, with, the, uh, with the environment, and uh, they just um, uh, begin to build uh, prototypes, uh, uh, just collecting, uh, of course, at the beginning, just collecting a lead or uh, or a servo. But now they are they are um, they are able to to develop something useful. Uh, something that uh, uh, some, some working uh, prototypes. Um, what can do Arduino for? I really, it's it's a big question. It's uh, it's quite difficult to 
uh, to suggest to Arduino what Arduino can do, because for me, Arduino uh, is, uh, is really a, a, a point of success for my didactic, because uh, I, I just can um, uh, bring with me my students into a laboratory, and uh, when I'm uh, into, into the laboratory, I can say, the, uh, I can say okay guys, just walk, just uh, react to uh, every kind of stimulus. So um, I think, uh, uh, and now with CTC, is really the platform and all the, the program, the learning program is, uh, uh, is really a, an amazing uh, instrument to develop knowledge uh, for, for students. So I, have, I really have no suggestion in this moment. Okay, okay. You, you are really a partisan. I really appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, exactly. Julio, and then we will wrap up. Yeah. For me, it's because uh, with, with Arduino, I can teach at the same time uh, programming, electronics, digital content, but uh, also uh, other, other skills for really interesting for me uh, from my point of view. And uh, how working in a, how work uh, my students in a team, how interact between them, how can I learn from other different sources on in the internet, for example, or forums? Um, the, the relationship between students, how can I divide the, the different tasks to solve uh, a specific problem? Um, for me, it's uh, two, two points of view. Uh, electronics, the curricula, electronic programming, and uh, suitable uh, skills. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I, I need to wrap up now. I want to thank you all for coming to the panel. I want to say I, I will write a blog post uh, with the links that you guys have been mentioning and, and your bio so that people can see and, and have written notes of what's been said today. So thank you very much for coming and thank see you, you all on the internet. Thank, hey. you. thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.